I have written an impact statement in regards to the loss of my father, Thomas Allen Barnett, and to try to explain how his death has affected my life. I'm positive that writing the statement will not change the result of this legal sentencing. I'm also positive that the only purpose of writing this document will be making us even more aware of how unfortunate our situation is. I was hoping this would act as a release and maybe be therapeutic, but it's proven not to be. It's reliving hell, and no one understands how this feels unless they lost someone in the fire. In the interest of time, I will give you the abridged history of my father and I's relationship. My father was 17 when I was born. I was 21 when he died. I'm consequently one of the oldest children to lose a parent. I am one of the oldest only because my father started planning his life in his teenage years. My father was around sporadically growing up, but it grown to be best friends. The owners of the station let my father in for free because he was a regular there. If they were to have charged him, his girlfriend said he would not have went. My dad and I had a talk a short while before he died and he spilled it. He cried and he bawled in fact. He answered every question I never had the courage to ask. He said he loved my mom, he always would, he loved me, and he always would and he'd do anything for me because that's what fathers do fathers, not dads. He was my father. He was my best friend. And it was as if he knew he was going to die three months later. It was like he was prepping me. And then my world changed prematurely due to negligence, careless, carelessness, and ignorance. How am I impacted? I'm impacted forever. My grandmother had to bury her youngest son. She in her 70s, he in his 30s. This could never be correct under any circumstances. Due to the stress of the situation, due to the loss of his youngest son, my grandfather, who was healthy as an ox, suffered a stroke and then died. Two of our favorite men were gone in less than two weeks. How does one measure the impact of that? It spans generations. At 21, I had to decide to cremate or bury my father because he had no will. I had my father in my life from the age of 10 to 21, 11 years. We got really close from 18 to 21, so I had four solid years with my dad before he was murdered. We were on our way to a lifetime of great years together, and I have been denied this, and my heart is hollowed by this forever. My father was 38 when he died. He owed his own business, and he was finally settled. My father didn't get to come to my college graduation. He guided me through all of my college years, and I could not have done it without his emotional and financial support. But then after all of his hard work and support, he couldn't be there. I'm graduating again in a year, and my father will not be there again. My father will not be able to walk me down the aisle. I have no one to give me away. My father will never meet his grandchildren ever. He'll never be able to see a little face that might slightly resemble him and look up at him and say, I love you, Grandpa. My father will never be a grandfather. He'll never know the joys of grandchildren. My kids won't know their grandfather or great-grandfather because they were both killed by this tragedy. I pick up the phone still to call my father, and I have to hang up and cry because he's not there anymore, and I lost my greatest support system, and I didn't realize that until he was gone. My biggest loss is selfish. I can never see him or speak to him or hug him or just hang out with him, and I want to enjoy his company and humor again. I blew out the candles on my father's 40th birthday cake as we tried to honor him. I had to read a detailed autopsy report telling me that my father had a normal weight brain. They measured my father's brain. They removed it from his head. I'm sure it's standard procedure, but it still disturbs me. My mom never had an opportunity to talk to my father and clear things up. There are no more chances for my parents. I have extreme emotions. We're not very normal. None of us get out of this emotionally. How do you begin to address the emotional wrecks we are? If you face this, if you look at the facts and say more than once out loud, I will never see them again, then you're going to be messed up beyond measure for days. We're angry, then we're sad, so we live in denial, and that certainly isn't healthy. I've denied that my father's been dead for three years. I'm just now facing this is a permanent thing, and, and it brings me to my knees in a heartache. Of course it was an accident. That's why it's not called an on purpose. 
but you learn in kindergarten that most accidents can be prevented and also that there are consequences for your actions. All of our lives are altered forever. This is our punishment. And we just hope that the defendant's punishments was something equal. And I know not many people say that they're sorry for what's happened. And I have nothing to do with it, but I'll say I'm sorry for all of you that you have to live through this. Thank you, Mr. Ramatron.